Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here. Welcome back to the railway and welcome to another review. Up today I have a locomotive that I'm hoping will be a very unusual one. From what I've heard of this model, or model if you will, this should be a very unique locomotive in my collection. And the loco is this. These are known as the Pico MyTrain locomotives. And as you can see, it's a little shunter or something like that. Now looking at this thing, it doesn't appear to be anything special, and that's because it's not. As I understand it, the idea behind these models is to take the model train and simplify everything about it and produce something that appeals to beginners or possibly youngsters as well, which is an idea I can definitely get behind. I think we need to see a lot more of this um, in the hobby in general. However, there are some features of this model, or in fact there's one feature in particular that I've heard about. I'm not even going to tell you what it is because I will get this out and we'll sort of investigate it together. But there is a feature that should be entirely unique among all of the locomotives in my collection. And I'm just really, really interested to see how this works, if it works, what it looks like, all of that other good stuff. So this locomotive was very, very, very inexpensive. It cost me £22.75 on Amazon, which does make it one of the cheapest models I've ever purchased or one of the cheapest locomotives at any rate. I will include an affiliate link down in the description if I can find any in stock. I don't think there are any at the time of filming but there might be when I go to release this video. So the Pico My Train HO scale little diesel shunter should be quite unique. Let's find out why and let's see what it's like. So the first thing I've got to admit to you is that I don't know what real life locomotive this thing is based on, or even if it is based on a real locomotive. Usually little models like this are, but I don't know for sure. There's literally nothing written on the locomotive that would give it away, and the, the box certainly doesn't give any information at all. The only thing I can see is DB, which of course does exist in real life. Does that stand for Deutsche Bahn or something like that? Almost certainly I said that wrong, but no, literally that is it. So I'm in the dark at the moment with this. Let me show you the end of the box though, because there is a little bit of information here. So it's the Pico My Train 57013. If that means anything, that's what you need to look up if you want to get one. And it is My Train Diesel Lock DB. I'm guessing diesel lock may stand for diesel locomotive or the equivalent word in German or whatever this might be. Anyway, let me show you the back of the box because there's something quite troubling about the design going on. So look at this kid here. Is this what Pico imagine children to look like while they're playing with their trains? He's striking a seductive pose and looking lovingly at the locomotive. Yes, troubling. And also look at his hand. What is he doing with his hand? Is this how your hands look when you're playing trains? Yeah, I don't know, there's something very odd about that. That poor little kid, known forever as the slightly creepy looking child on the back of a Pico box. Anyway, if you move across a little bit, you can see a couple more products in the range, looks like some wagons and even a Pico My Train train set. So this is like a, a veritable brand, I suppose. Not that I've ever heard of it, but for the first time today, we are going to learn about this and see what this is like also. I recognise that loco on the back of the box, I only just noticed that, <laughs> that's that other so-called Pico locomotive that I reviewed, although the one I reviewed might have been a knockoff, it wasn't uh, Pico branded or anything. Okay, come on then, I'm, I'm being very secretive today aren't I, I'm not revealing what interesting feature I think this locomotive has, let's pull this out. So £22.75, <laughs> not expecting much, I should, I should make that very clear, however, I wasn't expecting an awful lot of paperwork either, but it seems that there, there is quite a lot. So one, two, three, four articles about this very, very basic loco. So let's have a look at some of this. This one does not at all look interesting, does it? Let's have a look at this. Oh, good Lord. If there's no diagrams, I'm not gonna look at it because it's not gonna be interesting for the video. And indeed there is not. There is a British part there that says this is a model, not a toy. <laughs> yeah, honest. <laughs> this is this is the interesting part of the video, Sam rifling through boring documents. Uh, that is all in a different language and I don't understand it. I'm guessing it's something to do with warranty, but I don't know, I'm not gonna be sending this off. If it doesn't work, I'll just stamp on it and move on. And then what's this? 
Pico. Oh, this has got some diagrams on it. Let's take a look. Is this going to reveal the surprise? Oh, it might do a little bit. But you can see a little bit about what this involves. I might as well talk about it. Apparently, this is like a rubber band powered locomotive. You can see down at the bottom here, the transmission is literally rubber bandified. Uh, I should say it's not like it, one of those rubber band powered things that you wind up and then it runs for 30 seconds. I believe there is a motor inside, but yeah, rubber belts, which I've never had before on any locomotive. I've had some sort of cheap, nasty, there's the back of it, um, Bankman American locos that have belt drives in them, but they're not just rubber bands like these. So yeah, I just, I want to know how that will affect the performance. Does a loco with rubber bands powering it run any differently? Does it, is it reduced in its power? What happens when you overload it? That's a slightly nefarious question, isn't it? And then what's this? It's a shame that all of this is in German, although I haven't been looking at it ultra close, so maybe there have been English sections that I've not seen. Oh gosh, look at this, Sam Strain's advertising for Pico. Wow, so are these, these can't be Pico My Train locomotives, can they? Because these look a lot more advanced. Some of them don't. I can see that dreaded 040 there. <laughs> but yeah, some of this stuff looks a little bit more upmarket, doesn't it? Accessories and stuff from the back. Track plans. Okay, well, look, it's all very nicely presented, but it doesn't pertain to today's loco. So I'm going to put it all out of the way and let's have a look, shall we? Here we go. How do I open it? Ah, it's one of those monkey puzzles again. I need my I need my knife really, but I'm gonna try and do it without. There we go. Okay, okay. Well, it's a nice shiny thing, I must say. <laughs> That's all I can think of to say about this thing. Right, let's pull it out and take a look. All right. Wow. Well, first of all, this is obviously very very basic, but then again, of course it is because it cost me just a hair over twenty pounds. Unlike some of the other £20 locos that I've reviewed in the past though, they haven't attempted to sort of make this detailed and stick loads of parts on it and decorate it in an elaborate manner, which means on the one hand, yes, it's a basic model and it doesn't look amazing, but on the other hand, there isn't glue all over it. There isn't smudging all over the place where the decoration hasn't been done properly because there's no budget for it. So in a sense, the quality of this, despite its basic appearance, seems much higher than other locos of this price bracket, which is very interesting. Interesting. And then underneath, look at this. The axles are just gigantic cylinders so that this rubber band here on each of them can have decent purchase. And there is, it appears, we'll take a better look at this later on. It appears there's no gearing or anything. It's just the shaft on the motor is a much slimmer, smaller shaft. And that, of course, effectively gears down the speed of the motor. Absolutely fascinating. Now, this is not an approach that we see very often on model trains. Is there a good reason for that? Maybe, I'm expecting so. Is it going to work incredibly well and should Hornby and Backman start using rubber bands to power every one of their models? I doubt it, but again, maybe. I really don't know. So, I mean, it's a bit redundant because you've probably seen all the detail this thing has to offer, but I, I like to catalogue every aspect of the models I review, so we will take a close look at the level of detail just so that you know where I stand on it. And then, of course, I will investigate the mechanism and try this out. I am fascinated. I am curious. I am really interested to see how this thing will work. Despite the paperwork desperately pleading that this is a model and not a toy, just looking at it, it's quite clear that that is just not true. I guess the biggest giveaway is the fact that there is a child on the back of the box, um, albeit a slightly creepy child with a borderline unhealthy interest in his toy trains. But crucially, it is a child and not an adult. And just looking at the model, you can tell that it is clearly intended just as a toy. So I'm guessing they have to say that it isn't a toy so that it's not held to the same standard as toys. But anybody with two brain cells to rub together can tell at a glance that it is in fact Fact, a toy. So yeah, I don't, I don't know what's going on with that. At the end of the day though, it looks like a reasonably safe thing. There aren't that many small parts attached to it and I can't see it killing any children if you did give this to a child unless one of the rubber bands got hooked around a ventricle or something. Yeah, I don't really want to think about that. <coughs>
But like I said, thanks to the simplicity of the model, the quality comes across okay. I mean, there are literally just two decorated aspects of the model, the DB lettering on the side and the top of the cab, and both are done adequately. There's no paint bleed or anything like that. I cannot see a single separately fitted part across the whole body. Everything is moulded and moulded quite nicely as well. The body looks quite nice and clean, no issues in the moulding and also no glue marks or badly applied parts or anything like that. So yeah, it's very, very basic stuff. I mean, look at the cab, for instance, there's no glazing, no cab detail or anything like that. And these things actually make it more suitable and appropriate as a toy. I mean, if it had sort of separately fitted buffers that were that easy to pull out, <coughs> then that would make it less suitable for younger people, wouldn't it? But this really doesn't have anything like that. So it's very, very basic. The price reflects that. The thing looks quite nice. I can't help liking the thing. It just looks like something that you would enjoy running. Very, very unusual design with this sort of square looking bonnet over the engine. Yeah, I really don't know whether this is based on anything in real life or not. If you do know of a real locomotive that looks like this, please do comment down below and let me know. Anyway, I think that's more or less it for the close look. I'll show you the actual boxes and the underframe detail. Again, it's all just a bit of moulded detail going on, but it looks fine, doesn't it? It looks fine for £20 or just a hair above. I'm not complaining too much. So I'm going to, ooh, this is the part I'm really looking forward to now. I'm going to get the body off. I'm going to look at the mechanism. I'm going to film it. Then I'm going to put it down onto the track and I'll tell you all about it. This is the part of the video where things hopefully will start to get quite interesting. And I'm really looking forward to this. Well, I'm pleased to report that the mechanism is every bit as weird, as unconventional and as unique as I hoped it would be, which is great news because that means there was actually a point to this video. It's going to boil down to a bit more than just me making fun of a German kid and wasting £20 of my money and 30 minutes of your time. So let's take a look at the mechanism. I still can't get over these huge drums which double as the axles. That is super weird, isn't it? And it gets weirder still because the axles are not actually held in place. There's nothing to keep those axles from dropping out except for those rubber bands which are holding them in place. That's kind of janky thing that I like to see. That's very, very weird. And the bearings themselves are the pickups. So yeah, the axles just push against those copper or brass pieces, whatever they're made of. And that's how the model picks up power. So technically, does that mean this model has brass bearings? I mean, I guess technically it does. Anyway, I managed to get the body off. It's a very, very bare bones chassis, as you can see. The motor is mounted centrally like this, and it has some sort of inductors on board, which should hopefully smoothen out the power input. The motor is literally just glued in place with what looks like just hot glue. So there are no motor mountings or anything like that. It's just, it's basically as though I'd designed this, just glue a motor into the middle and that'd be done. Then you've got these shafts, which look like they're made of brass or copper or something like that. And that's it, that's it. The, the rubber bands just hook around those shafts and that's how power is transmitted. And you've also got what I think are the smallest flywheels I've ever seen to the point where I don't think they would actually have much of a purpose as flywheels. I wonder if they're just to hold the rubber bands from going back towards the motor and getting stuck or something. I don't know, but yeah, I'm gonna call them flywheels just because I think that's amusing. Now, as you can see, yeah, I'm not kidding. The chassis is very, very bare bones. We've got no lights, no facility for DCC, so there's no sockets, no speaker or anything like that, which means that this model was cheap because it's cheap. It's not like that AliExpress Electric I looked at where I bought it cheap and then took off the body and found all kinds of crazy features. No, this one really was cheap to buy because it was cheap to make. Very, very few frills on this. There is a die cast insert that goes inside the body, which brings the weight up to 125 grams, which is about the same as a Hornby Smoky Joe. So for an 040, this is not unreasonably light, I would say. And it's also a little bit under gauged as well. I measured you know, less than 14.5 four which means that I guess this thing will handle pretty tight curves. And again, given the fact that this is a toy, despite the claims of the paperwork, I don't think that's too unreasonable. Yeah, you can run this on tight curves if you want. Anyway, look at that. I've waffled on for a long time about that, haven't I? All without actually trying the thing. So the first ever locomotive that I've owned whose transmission consists of nothing, nothing but rubber bands. <laughs> that's it, no gear train just rubber bands. How many times can I say rubber bands? There's probably going to be a video now on someone else's channel counting it up. Anyway, let's test it then. Let's test it. I've not tried this yet. So here we go. 
bit of juice. Oh, did you see that? Oh, oh. Oh, okay. I tell you what, that was weird. It does run weirdly. It's very quiet. Oh my god, that is super weirdly quiet. Ooh, so that mean that suggests then that it is the gears on a traditional locomotive that make the noise. Because that is quiet, like seriously. Let me I'm gonna give you a really unflattering shot, probably up my nose or something, but if I get dead close and turn it up, you still probably won't hear much. Can you believe that? That's very silent. Right, well, needless to say, the crawl was a bit pants, wasn't it? <laughs> I don't really know what sort of motor it is. Like, it is trying to crawl now. <laughs> so, I mean, either the motor is rubbish or rubber bands actually aren't more efficient than gears, which I thought maybe they would be, but they're obviously not. Oh my God, that is the worst. <laughs> it's the worst. But it was cheap, and I mean, it, it did allow them to sell this model for like 20 odd pounds. I'm starting to feel that perhaps it wasn't cheap enough, but you know, maybe, maybe that's a bit too harsh. <laughs> Look at that, oh my God, that was so, so jerky. I mean, that is the definition of cogging, isn't it? Let's update the dictionary, because this is the most I've ever seen a loco cog. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna be a five pole motor, is it, realistically? Could be though, could be. Right, let's go fast, shall we? All right, so it's not exactly a pocket rocket. You know, it's it's not dead slow, but it's not crazy fast. I don't know, I, I do like the way that runs. At the higher speeds, it's actually really smooth. It's just useless at crawling. Wow, fascinating, very, very fascinating. Okay, fine. Right, well, let's run it around the layout, see how it behaves, shall I? And then I suppose I'll hook it up with some wagons and such later on, and we'll see if we get any slipping of the rubber bands. Let's try it. I mean, to be honest, it's adequate, isn't it? It's actually working quite nicely. Do I think rubber bands are a good idea? Like I said at the start, should Hornby and Backman and proper brands be using rubber bands? No, I don't think so. I mean, the performance from this isn't great. They're probably not going to last all that long, realistically, particularly on a bigger and heavier locomotive. And to be honest, it's just a bit naff, isn't it, compared with, you know, proper manufactured gears and such, which offer better torque and all that other stuff. However, for this strict application, for a very, very inexpensive model designed for youngsters, I don't think that's a bad idea, you know, because if after this has done sort of 30 hours or something, have you got gears that are gonna be wearing away that you've got to struggle to replace? No, you've got two rubber bands, and to replace them, all you've got to do is go down to the pound shop and buy some more, you know, rubber bands that are roughly the same size, and you could get this locomotive up and running again very, very easily. There are no gears to oil, there are no gears to worry about getting fluffed up with hair and other cack that might be on your carpets. So for this application, and for this application alone, I don't think it's a terrible idea. I mean, it's also a terrible crawler. Again, it's not a great performer. Maybe it will be better after it's run in. But overall, this is not as bad as I expected it to be. And as you can see, it's a very, very charming little loco slash toy slash model, isn't it? Lovely little red shunter. It's hard to complain, isn't it, for 20 quid? So I'll see you very, very shortly. We'll see if the performance is any better after it's run in. I doubt it, but... Oh well, let's see what happens, let's have some fun. Okay folks, I am back. And unsurprisingly, you know, this is not great. On the plus side, it's still working. We're an hour in and it's still working. And it does run at a reasonably consistent speed. However, it does run a little bit temperamentally over the points. It's stuttering on points, it's stopping on points possibly due to the unconventional design of the pickups, possibly due to the slightly under-gauged nature of those very strange wheel sets. Um, but you know, overall, again, for what it cost, it's not absolutely terrible. Is the crawl any better now than it was to start with? I would be surprised. Uh, no, it certainly doesn't seem to be. Let me give it a nudge. No, it needs a bit more. A bit more, give it a nudge. <laughs> it's not. It's not a happy bunny. In fact, I would say that's even worse. There we are, it's going now. It's backwards. Oh. Yeah, 
it ain't that there's no talk there is there and i don't think that's to do with the rubber bands it could be but yeah that motor is just not having a great time turning the wheels and such uh, at the high speeds though it must be said the smoothness is more than adequate so it's not absolutely terrible um, i'm quite impressed with the general torque of the mechanism at the higher speeds if i put my fingers in front of the model and turn it up you can see that the wheels are spinning as opposed to the rubber band slipping so that's quite good obviously the friction between the rubber bands and the shafts and the axles that is all sufficient so that the wheels will slip rather than the rubber bands which should help to preserve them and the pulling power is surprisingly good for a loco of this weight i'll measure 0.15 newtons which is actually more than the hornby peckets so yeah it's not a bad puller and in order to test that, I have set up this rake of wagons. How many have we got here? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight wagons. So, you know, for a tiny little shunter, I think that is a reasonable test. So let's go and couple, see if it can couple, and find out whether this rubber band based locomotive is capable of hauling a train. But it sure won't be a good shunter. Oops, that was an accident. Honest. <laughs> okay, but it did couple, as you can see. Okay, 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 come on. Take it off slowly. Ooh, it does not do slowly. There we go, turn it up a bit. It's only smooth, really, at that speed, which is quite atrocious, isn't it? Oops, stuttered on the points. Anyway, on the middle line, I've decided to run the other loco that just really reminds me of the Pico My Train shunter. And that, of course, is this, the Triang Dock Shunter now. <laughs> This locomotive is getting on for 70 years old, and yet it is still more detailed than the loco I've reviewed today. It's got more painted details, it's got more separately fitted parts, it's got a light. Yeah, it's crazy, 70 years old and it's still miles ahead of it. So yeah, today's loco is, is a basic one, that's for sure. But yeah, this it just reminds me of these trying dock shunters. And wow, that was a bit of a struggle anyway, wasn't it? But it's going, there we go. And the theme of today's running session is beginner slash budget locos. And so we have the other sort of Pico branded loco, although technically this one's not Pico branded. This is the, the El Cheapo 040. But I do have other budget locos in the various sidings and things. So see which other ones you can spot. And there is a non-budget serious model in the sidings as well. So see if you can identify which one that is and let me know in the comments. Right, let's catch up with the my train. So all jokes aside, the traction really isn't bad, is it? It's a decently weighty loco. It's got good grip. The rubber bands aren't constantly slipping as I expected them to be. So overall with a load, it behaves really quite nicely. And this seems to be more or less at the limit of what you'd want a locomotive to haul realistically. So yeah, overall, I mean, there are no huge complaints with the performance. Clearly, if this was a very expensive, serious loco from Hornby or Backman something, and it performed like this, I would be absolutely slating it. But obviously, as a much cheaper budget loco, I'm not going to be having a rant about this, quite clearly, uh, because it is just a bit of fun, and it sure is a bit of fun. It doesn't look terrible, it does work okay, and it only costs £20, so you can't go wrong really with them, can you? And if you fancy picking one up, I can recommend it. Obviously, you'd have to understand what you're getting yourself into but it's such a novelty in terms of the mechanism i mean your youngsters and your beginners probably wouldn't appreciate that but for someone like me who is familiar with model train mechanisms it was worth getting this just to see that mechanism and test it out and just see something different for a change so yeah overall i'm quite pleased with this it's fine so just for fun, I am going to do ratings for this loco today because it's what I do in my reviews. It's part of my format. However, I should make it very clear, this is just for fun because this locomotive was not designed to be compared with much more expensive, more serious models. And my rating system really wasn't designed for basic beginners toys and such. But just for fun, if I was to rate this as a serious locomotive, how would I do so? Well, as you can see, it doesn't look too great. So the level of detail I would be giving one star because obviously it's a very, 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 very basic plastic body with almost no decoration, literally no separately fitted parts. 
and certainly no detail in the way of a cab or anything like that. The detail rating does not address the matter of character, of which this logo has a lot, so yeah, do bear that in mind. The performance, again, now the performance isn't terrible, but it's not great, is it? It's not great. The crawl is virtually non-existent. The pickups don't do their job that well. I mean, on points and such, it does cut out very easily, despite its large wheelbase, and you've got slightly uneven running because of the slight gauging issue, but yeah, I mean, the performance isn't absolutely terrible, but it doesn't look good compared with other proper locomotives. The pulling power is quite good though, I mean 0.15 newtons, that's around 12 coaches, that's more than the Peckets can haul and they're notoriously quite strong, and it's even more than some 060s I'll have like the DJM 1361, so yeah the pulling power in all seriousness for a locomotive of this size and weight is not terrible. The mechanism though, I mean ugh, this is just so unlike any other mechanism I've ever analysed, I don't even know. Uh, whether two stars is reasonable. I think it is though, because it is not a particularly nice mechanism. I mean, the axles are not even held into the model properly, they're just held in by rubber bands. The pickup system doesn't work that well. I mean, it is a little bit unreliable, and this is while it's brand new and running on clean track. You know, as time goes on, it's only going to get worse, isn't it? The whole system relies on the friction of rubber bands, which of course will diminish over time. The rubber will deteriorate and need replacing, and there are no replacement rubber bands in the box with this which means you've got to source your own somehow uh, that's not so great the motor appears to just be a three pole motor i'm not sure whether it is or not but it doesn't run like a five pole motor and there are also no lights no dcc capability or anything like that so if, i think if anything mechanism two stars is giving this loco the benefit of the doubt the quality is not terrible i've given it three star because that's what i would give this if it was a serious model i mean it is very very plasticky the solution for fitting the motor just all of that glue yeah not too keen on the, the quality of the thing however I mean, what little decoration there is, is done nicely. The thing looks fine, it's well moulded, it's reasonably neat and tidy. No huge issue with the quality, of course. Value for money, though, at £22.75, a working locomotive that isn't awful, is fine, is, as far as I'm concerned, so I have given it 5 star there. Overall, though, it's not a great score, unfortunately. 5.49 out of 10. There it goes into the ranking, just for fun, of course. 25th below the Backman Thomas. Yeah, it's not meant for anything serious, but in the end, it should be a reasonably hard-wearing locomotive. It looks the part, it didn't cost too much, and it does work. Not great, but it does work. So, yeah, if, you're, if you've got a little one, or someone that's literally just wanting to get started, or you just want something to mess about with, then it's okay. Yeah, you could do worse. There we go, that, that's all I can think of to say. So this may be at the bottom of my rankings, and it may not be something that I would recommend to a serious modeler. However, I had fun with this here today. And with a product like this, what else honestly matters? And maybe there are situations in which a model like this could be worth buying. If you want a project, if you want to practice building a decent mechanism for it, 20 quid, you've got a body to practice on. If you're interested in detailing up locomotives, you know, making your own details, improving things, this would be a perfect starting point. If you're interested in maybe starting a bit of weathering or repainting or anything cosmetic, then for 20 quid it doesn't matter if you mess it all up. So, yeah, on the one hand, if you want something that's just fun to mess about with, it's fine, I can recommend it. And also, if you want a project, again, I could probably recommend this. As long as you know what you're getting yourself into, and as long as you know what the level of detail's like, and what the mechanism's like, and what a nightmare it would be to fit this with DCC or something, then I don't have any problems in saying that this is okay. Does it match up with Hornby's Locos or anything else like that that costs a lot more? No, of course not. It just is what it is. Take it or leave it. I've had fun, and that's the main thing. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was a bit of something different, that's for sure. And uh, for that, I have enjoyed myself. So I'll see you on the next one. You take care, look after yourselves, and uh, I'll, I'll see you soon. All right, cheers, everybody.